Hey guys, welcome. This is Jen with Faith and Fabric. And today I'm excited to, as part of the Designers Quilt Show, to give you guys um, a, a tour of my quilt studio. So um, it was actually in, in much need of a good cleaning. And so um, thank you for that. <laughs> that was kind of that little bit of inspirational kick I needed to get things done. So let's get started. So this is my studio. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't have a cameraman, so uh, you guys are actually on one of those really awesome long stick poles. So I'll have to move that around a little bit today as we take the tour. So just adjust and uh, hopefully I won't make you too seasick. Okay, so let's get started on the tour. This corner is my favorite corner. I don't know the best place to stand so you can see. Um, this is my little uh, comfortable space for reading. So um, obviously the room's a big square. I've got this tucked into one little corner. So I've got obviously a quilt. This is actually made for uh, made by a friend of mine. Uh, she made it for me for my 40th birthday a couple years ago. So, um, and it's our old nursing chair, which um, even though it's been years since my son has been that little, uh, I can't bring myself to part with that chair. So that's my nice little reading corner. And then over here is kind of a, um, a my to-do space. So we'll keep moving this camera around a little bit. Um, and I really like this cabinet. My husband is a general contractor and he built this cabinet for me. And I'm gonna show you what this cabinet does. Um, first, we'll take a look at, at the cabinet itself. So magazines, which I always seem to have a ton of magazines behind uh, to read. Um, you can see it. I'm learning Spanish. So Spanish in People magazine is probably the best way for me to learn this right now. So lots of magazines to read. Uh, this is my, my ongoing to-do pile. This is fabric that's been, you can see, um, this is from Advent Fabric. This has been sitting here since Christmas. So giving you guys a real honest look about what it's like in the studio today. Um, that's been sitting here now for four months. I just have not had time to deal with it. Uh, this is um, an old diaper bag, actually. So when my son was little, uh, this was full of little diaper oddsies and ends, but I'll be honest with you, I have converted this over now to just hold all my sewing stuff. See, these are those pencils I was telling you about on Monday. I love these things. So um, this is all that, that, just that little tiny quilty stuff that I have nowhere to put, but I've always seemed to be grabbing. So this is a great storage component for it. So I keep that, you know, just honestly always sits up here and it's, it's within easy reach. So this cabinet, I love this cabinet. And here's why. This is my unfinished works in progress cabinet. Uh, here's how it works. So this is a custom cabinet. It's got nice little doors. And these are cookie trays, and you can see each cookie tray slides in and out, and there's a project on it. So this is the project, for example, um, the sand crabs. I think I was telling you guys we've got the uh, sand crab tour coming up, um, the quilt along coming up on May 1st. So I'm pulling this one out a lot, just trying to get things ready for, I've got that hair that's driving me crazy. Um, just trying to get things ready for the quilting tour. So this is so, so convenient, and I'll back up here so you can see it. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six shelves of works in progress. And what's really nice is, again, you can pull the shelf out with the stuff you're working on. And when you're done, you can slide it right back in. And this just honestly keeps a lot of stuff off surfaces in my, in my quilting space, which I really, really like. So um, that's also kind of that dreaded space because I open it up and realize how many projects I have in progress. Okay, so we're going to keep turning you around here. Dun, 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 dun. We'll go to the other corner. So um, I think I mentioned, actually I'm going to move you over with me so you can see better. Um, we are a homeschool family. So uh, this is a little bit of a change for us, obviously, with, with COVID of everybody being home. Um, we do a hybrid homeschool where we're in school two days a week and then we're home three. So obviously now we're home full time. But this is our, our homeschool space. So, <laughs> and you can see there's my post-it notes on the wall and there's my son's. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But uh, this is his little space, and what I really like is um, um, I can sit right next to him when we do when we do our schoolwork. So hopefully you can see. This is a nice long cabinet here. Um, we'll take a long. I'll pull you back in a minute so you can see. But this is kind of the 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 office school side. So I get all my paperwork done over here. I can write all the blog posts, write all my patterns. Everything happens on on the business side. Um, and then we've got some really nice tall shelves and I'm going to pick you up and move you over here so you can kind of see that. So you can see here, I've got just a lot of nice shelving that's always open. Um, I've got my serger and then just a lot of little office supplies and stuff like that. You know, one thing I wish is it's, it's actually making it feel like it's kind of dark in here um, because it's actually so, so, so bright. 
this whole room is surrounded by a bank of windows here. You can see the light coming through and a bank of windows there. And the lighting in here is just beautiful all the time. So I really appreciate having just so much natural light. Very rarely do I have to put the lights on. Okay, so let's keep turning. So we're gonna go this way a little bit now over to the sewing side. So obviously we've got sewing machine. Um, this is the brother that I talked about um, in Monday's class where we looked at, you know, a lot of my, my favorite sewing supplies. Um, it's nice and big. You can see the chair just slides back and forth. I love this chair, it's on wheels. <laughs> so I can go from business working to very quickly sewing, uh, which is really, really nice. And I've also got a lot more of my sewing stuff on here and I'm gonna bring you a little closer here. Let's get a little closer so you guys can see here. I'm going to adjust the camera. Again, I hope I'm not making you seasick here. Um, some sewing books. Honestly, most of the books I have, I'm a super minimalist, so I don't have a lot of quilting books. Um, I like patterns that are online because I can download them and save them. I do have a few go-to that I've got, um, plus just some really neat legacy books that my mother-in-law gave me that I've kept. So I've got that here. Um, this is <laughs> the, the ongoing mask making project. I, I think I'm probably up to I'm not kidding you, probably 300 masks already. And it's been it's been great to be giving them away and to be selling them both. Um, actually see if I back up, these are my open orders. There's about 40 envelopes there I've got to get out this week. So fingers crossed that works. Uh, this is where, next shelf up, um, all my thread goes. I keep it in, this is a, just a big bell jar. Um, this is a little mason jar of more like specialty embroidery threads. They're a little bit thicker. And so I like to keep them separate from just my everyday sewing threads. It just makes things easier for me when I need to grab something. Um, and then behind that is my favorite jar. This is my chocolate jar that nobody in my family knows about. <laughs> so it's full of like all my dark chocolates and it keeps everything hidden so nobody else can find it. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so those are all my jars. Um, next level up, we've got more mason jars full of scraps. Um, I love little bits of scraps. They come in so handy for so many different things. Um, you can see this is my little green jar. So it's just, you know, and obviously not every little bit I don't save, but anything that's maybe like, I say it's like, if it's at least two to three inches big, I'll save them. Um, I do a lot of piecing with uh, like paper piecing. And so you end up with those weird size things. And so many times I'm using different colors. And so it's really nice just to keep all the scraps together. Um, plus visually, I just, I just like the way it looks. It makes me happy. So I try to keep the colors out that I like the most. And then up top, just some, some cute little things. Uh, I've, got, I've got, you know, a box with selvage edges. Someday I have this, this hope that I can do one of those really cool selvage projects. If you've ever seen people save the selvage edges from their fabric and then they make, um, gosh, I don't even know, like, like wallets or little tote bags or anything like that. So that's what I've got up in that box up there. What else? Oh, so full of sewing drawers, you know, just, I don't know, I've got shipping stuff in there. I've got, um, I don't know what else is in here. Power cords, a lot of exciting stuff in there. Not really. Okay, so let's take you over to this that I'm gonna move you guys again. I hope this is okay. Okay, there we go. We'll put this on a bit of an angle there. Okay, so huge cutting table. Um, I've got a very large mat from Sewology. It's here, 36 inches. So this is their, their extra large mat, which I like because it's one big uniform mat and I can do all my cutting uh, without having to worry. I used to have two smaller mats, but then they had that ridge in the middle and it kept ruining a lot of my rotary cutters. So this is super convenient to have one big mat. And then I've got um, the pressing right next to it. So it's really nice. I can quickly cut what I need to cut and then I can press it right here. I keep all my pressing uh, materials really close too. So an iron, um, this is the iron I shared with you guys at Sunbeam, I really, really like. And then just a basket full of all the things I use for pressing. So um, just plain, plain water, um, best press, which I really, really like. And then this one is Terial Magic. This is like heavy, heavy, heavy duty. Um, this is really more for like, like if you're gonna do like 3D fabric art, this will make stuff so stiff that it doesn't, um, it's not really meant to be like quilted or sewn through, it's more like for decor fabric, but really cool stuff. So I keep all those up here. Um, just to keep, to keep everything really honestly close at hand, but not so close that I'm tripping over it. This is where I keep my fabric too. So again, this is a custom piece my husband made for me. So each of these, these are Ikea bins and it's really stuffed in here. You can see I pull one drawer and they all come out, but each of these are organized by color. So here's all my greens, um, 
overflowing of blacks and whites. And then um, here, the one below that one is novelty prints. So I've got three different cabinet drawers of what, four drawers each, uh, full of just different fabrics. And so this is how I find the best way to organize my fabrics. Again, doing it by color, keeping it tucked away. And then it's got three access drawers going across the top. And you know, nothing special. This one's full of like rotary cutters, scissors, non-skid mats. And so again, just all those things that I like to have at hand, but I don't, I don't like to see the stuff. So I kind of keep it hidden. Good so far? You guys have any questions? And then the last piece here is a design wall. So uh, you might recognize these blocks are from uh, the Quilters Planner. This is the ones we've been working on. So we've got January, February, and March. I just threw them up there the other day. You could probably tell I love soft muted tones, the blues, the whites, the grays. So I'm doing my quilt in blue, white, and gray. So I'm really excited to finish this one up. Um, obviously just doing one block a month, but put those up there the other day just to add some nice color to the room. And then well, <laughs> this is my sad little story. This is actually, I teach sewing classes and this is one of my little students. She was working on a Lent uh, table runner and Obviously, we didn't get very far because here in California, we shut down on, oh my gosh, I think it was like the 13th of March, so it's been a month, and so uh, her project's been sitting up there since, so luckily, Lent and Advent have the same colors, so maybe we'll just turn that into an Advent table runner when, uh, when everything opens back up and classes start again, so that's my studio. I hope you guys have found some good tips in here. Um, I'm going to include a link to the post where it shares a little bit more about um, some of the design elements. And I have a really good book that I recommend I bought when we designed this room that just had some, some really neat tips. Um, and so I'll share that with you guys too. I'll put that in the link in the comments. And so I hope this was helpful. I would love to see your guys' spaces and just learn a little bit about how you sew and how you do your crafts. It was great to join you guys today and we will talk to you soon. Take care.